discovered that human intention can influence sensors remotely. It's possible to make telepathic communication. When people are specially trained, then they can send intention to each other. Everybody can develop this. Everybody. If you want to develop telepathic communication ability, first of all, you need to believe in this, that it's possible. Then you need to it was always in all ancient beliefs, in all ancient philosophies. In principle, it's the same core. And this core was always created by top level thinkers who had a direct contact with higher spirits. Now we can combine together science and spirituality. We create our life our own, with our own intention and our own sense. So we are as human species. We are not individual beings, but we are reality, we are common. Hey there guys, as you know, we are 70% water and the power of intention is something we've covered with Dr. Constantine before. So tuning into the impact of health and wellness and intention and how our intentions are impacting our biofields, our biospheres, this is a really powerful conversation for your health and wellness and making sure that your thoughts align with the reality that you're trying to create. Please remember to like, comment and hit subscribe. It helps more than you know and without too much further ado, today's episode. Welcome back to the Inspired Evolution. And we have with us today, Inspiring Our Evolution, once again, Dr. Konstantin Korotkov. How are you there, Konstantin? Very good. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, I just arrived yesterday, so it was just short sleep, but still everything's fine. Oh, nice to hear from you. So for those tuning into Dr. Konstantin for the first time, He's a distinguished professor of physics at St. Petersburg State Technical University, internationally renowned scientist acclaimed for groundbreaking research on the human energy field, the inventor of GDV, which is the gas discharge visualization technique, significant advancement beyond what is called Karelian photography. We talked more about this in our previous episode, and that had revolutionized the understanding and visualization of human energy fields. His technology is today widely recognized and utilized in health and spirituality sectors, his profound implications in medicine, psychology, holistic wellness. It's been over 30 years of research experience that that's built upon. Um, he's authored many influential books. He holds 17 patents and embodies a unique blend of, I guess, what we like here the most, which is this religious, spiritual insight, the intersect intersections between the two. Dr. Constantine, I um, was listening back to our previous episode and I wanted to tune in with you in regards to asking a question around intention. Um what was it like for you when you first discovered that intention could travel thousands of, I guess, miles or kilometers through time and space and be received at the other end? That must have been quite a, um, yeah, was there disbelief? Was there, yeah, how did that, how did that moment feel? You see, for me, of course, uh, first, um, I would say experience was when I uh, discovered that human intention can influence sensors remotely. And this was in 1980, maybe, 79, something of this kind, so a long, long time back, because I had one friend, and he was very strong healer, very strong. And he was physicist as well, he worked together in the university, in the university. and uh, one, uh, and I, everybody knew that he has these healing abilities. And you understand, it was in Soviet time. And in Soviet time, we had no, um, all, all religions was totally forbidden. It was all materialistic. We were all, it was all materialistic people. But at the same time, I was always interested in some new topics. And one day, my wife um, had a problem. She had uh, ultrasound. And after ultrasound, she had huge pain. And doctor, she came to the doctor, one doctor, another doctor. But doctors told her, oh, it happens sometime, but we can do nothing. Just wait. And uh, of course, she's suffering uh, with very bad pain. And I asked my friend, uh, oh, Alec, could you come and uh, help her? Oh, yes, yes, no problem. He came. 
Uh, he put his hands on her body, and after 10 minutes, pain was totally gone. And of course, we had wonderful dinner together. And uh, he thought, oh, it's very good for me. I can do whatever. I can influence people even remote. For me, by that time, it was very tricky. And I thought, oh, but if you can influence people remotely, can you influence some sensors? Oh, no problem. I can influence sensors. And ask him, okay, but if I construct some sensors, would you be able to uh, come and uh, influence it? Oh, yes, yes, let's do it. And by that time, I was working in plasma physics, and I was experimental physicist, so I was able to make different physical uh, systems. And I constructed a physical system based on ideas of uh, on ideas of unstable uh, phases uh, of different uh, plasma states. And I put the sensor in our laboratory, and I invited him at night one night when it was nobody in the laboratory and uh, he was he did concentration and i was looking to oscilloscope to the graph and at the same moment i see the graph it's line coming like this and at some moment it's coming up see and it was amazing for me i told him okay let's repeat it maybe it's just some look okay he repeated it again it was graph like this and coming up like this so by the end, we repeated with him the experiment several times. Every time it was repeatable. It was a very strong guy, very strong guy. And for me, it was, of course, a big shift in my consciousness because it was clear that with mind, with intention, with consciousness, person can influence physical sensor. And then after some time, of course, it was different perturbations in my life. After some time, I became the deputy head of laboratory and uh, we developing a system of uh, telepathic communication with submarines and satellites cosmic stations yeah this is um i'm imagining being in that moment with you you said that at the time um the soviet union there was a a less of an openness to spirituality let's say it that way how was your research received um because, yeah, there are some implications. Again, it, it is science that you're conducting on some level, but then also on another level it has some um, quite, um, it shifts the perception of what we understand to be 3D reality quite significantly in other ways. How was it received at the time? Did you have to keep it a secret or was it okay? Yeah. You see, by Soviet time, of course, everything was practically forbidden. When I told my chief, the head of the laboratory, by that time, but what we did with experiments, he was totally furious. He was told, oh, how could you do this? Who allowed you to do this? How, who allowed you to bring this person to the laboratory? You, you did very bad. I, I can fire you immediately because and you will never go to any university again because you will get a uh, bread mark. So please, uh, please don't do it again, never. So that's how it was accepted by my uh, boss. Then later on, when I did these experiments, I had something not published. By that time, published was impossible. But I was presenting at some meeting conferences. And all my colleagues in the university where I was professor all was uh, thinking, oh, it's something crazy. But in parallel, uh, in Soviet time, I worked a lot for security systems for our Ministry of Internal Affairs, for our Ministry of um, uh, Military Ministry. That is why uh, my this work was totally official and was very well accepted. It was in plasma physics, laser physics, uh, magnetic uh, magnet, magnets, uh, then uh, many different fields. And that is why I had these works in parallel. And uh, people knew about this because I was given some awards for this work. That's why they had to accept it. Oh, it's some crazy topics this guy is doing, but it's okay. <laughs> That's amazing. And you said even that you eventually ended up sending telepathic signals from um, submarines, which is under the ocean, under the ocean, in the ocean, under the earth, uh, sea level, let's put it that, under sea level, all the way up through to satellites. Was that... 
Did you know that that was possible when you were conducting it or was it another experiment to sort of see how far in the time space like you could actually transcend these packets of information, energy through and to like, yeah, how was, how did that experiment come to be and how did you find those results? You know, that in mid uh, 80s, both United States and Soviet Union, they organized this set of this type of experiments. And uh, first, of course, it was in, in the United States when uh, it was Stanford experiments on uh, uh, telepathically acceptance of information. And it was shown that it's possible for one person to send some images to another person. And it became known, this information, because something was published even. And uh, by that time, so the system decided that, okay, we need to do something similar. Because if Americans do it, then we can do it. And of course, everybody was in uh, high sources, they were thinking that it's possible to use in uh, military, like remote viewing, like this telepathic communication. So that is why they organized laboratories, both in Russia and in Soviet system uh, union and in the uh, United States. And <coughs> scientists <coughs> from both sides <coughs> been developing these systems. That is why I was invited to this laboratory as a deputy head of laboratory on science. And we did these experiments. We demonstrated after three years. In uh, it was very interesting experiments with a lot of, uh, I would say, money involved with unlimited resources practically, with a lot of possibilities. And we really demonstrated that it's possible to make telepathic communication. That it's repeatable. It's possible between people. I did same with remote uh, intention to sensors. Again, I made big report on this and demonstrated that it's possible. We did many experiments, but it's very unstable. So uh, first of all, it should be specially selected people. In our case, it's not just random people. With random people, probability was very low. <clears throat> when people are specially trained, then they can send intention to each other and some information. And second, it depends a lot on their uh, emotional state, physiological state. Uh, for example, in the morning, at night, before lunch, after lunch, it's all different results. And that's why people uh, themselves, uh, they don't understand this. That's why uh, we came to understanding that, of course, it is possible, but it is very subtle. So it's not... 100% probability of this effect. It's maybe in the latest uh, experiments that we did many, many times with many different uh, um, psyche people, uh, probability is about 80% of results. In 80% with strong psyche people or with group of meditators, we have effect, good effect. But in 20%, we have nothing. And in some cases, effect is on the level of uh, probability still. So that is why we ha I have no doubts. And now it's proven by many experiments with many uh, laboratories that it's possible. But still, it depends a lot on human intention, on human abilities. And I have no doubts that strong psyche people, strong healers, they, it is uh, genetically inherited uh, ability. Because that was going to be one of my questions is I'm sure that people are listening into this podcast, myself included. Um, and then like, how do we activate some of these telepathic abilities to be able to communicate with each other, to be able to emotionally understand each other a little bit better? Um, but you believe they're genetically inherited to some degree, or are there some ways that we can actually um, develop some of these special abilities that you're referring to? Yes. First of all, everybody can develop this. Everybody. But to some extent, same as Everybody can teach, can learn playing piano or flute, but it will be, of course, a different extent, <laughs> I understand. Plus, as any ability, you need to train it. For example, if you want to develop uh, telepathic communication ability, first of all, you need to believe in this, that it's possible. Then you need to train it. For example, I did it, uh, this training for some time, and now 
uh, when I need to call someone, very often I don't call if I have no time. I just ask a person to call me. And either they call me or we just meet. Met, meet. So that's very typical. <laughs> so it works very well for everybody. Same, if you want to um, help your dog, your animal, or your relatives uh, to relieve pain, to help them, of course you can do it with your energy, with your intention, with your energy. But to some extent, some people can uh, help their relatives uh, to relieve from pain, from headache, but of course, only very strong psyche people who are professional, they can help people with serious problems, like, uh, like really serious um, problems and serious diseases. And we know many people of this kind. Hey, you're Inspired Tribe. I want to take a quick sec. I wanted to share something today with you that is really dear to my heart. And it's actually what keeps the entire ecosystem around the Inspired Evolution thriving, my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's basically coaching that helps you live a spiritually aligned life. I coach people from all different types of walks of life. That These people are leaders and they're looking to have an incredible spiritual impact in the lives that they're leading for themselves and then also lead in alignment to their values. Now you don't have to take my word for it. Here's a few people that have also transformed through my coaching and here's what they have to say. Amrit is a fantastic coach. In a few sessions, he got to a depth that I'd only experienced before working with certain medicines. And He's gone through a lot of the struggles that you're probably facing. Then my corporate banking job wasn't really doing it. You feel like you're not making progress towards your goals. And Amrit's been a really strong, supportive figure in my journey. I'm more in control of myself. I'm kinder to myself. I actually have that vision and a purpose. I do feel like I'm a better version of myself already. Amazing energy. He was easy to talk to, which made me easy to trust him. Working with Amrit at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and really I was bouncing out of bed. Whenever I get off the calls with Amrit, best money we've ever spent. <laughs> I would not recommend him because I don't want everyone to know about him and then I won't be able to book him. If he gets too busy, I won't get my turn. I would say absolutely. There's no way you can work with Amrit for a period of time without being transformed. So if you're considering him as a coach, do not hesitate because you won't be disappointed. As you guys can see, there's a lot of people all over the world from all these different corners experiencing incredible transformations. I don't think if I can say humbly myself that there is anything quite like this somewhere else online. Most people that you know have channels that you know grow and grow and grow don't really focus on one-to-one -one offerings. I have just found that it is the most profound space where you can bring yourself in a private container and really just share what's going on for yourself. And if you want to book in for that call with me, touch base, it's www amrit.coach forward slash life. That's www.amrit.coach forward slash L-I-F-E. There is a link in the show notes below to book in that call. And yeah, if you want to take your journey further, if you want to dive in deeper and you really want to live a spiritually aligned life, if it's for you, please do check it out. And without too much further ado, once again, for your spirit, for yourself, today's podcast. And so the belief is a fundamental tenant to first and all believing in it. And then secondary, you said training. Is it a matter of um, small acts of, like you said, you know, calling someone and being like, hey, I wonder if that person could call me um, and allowing them to call you, um, feeling into like, what was the, some of the exercises, I guess, some of the skills, some of the training, um, or are there any things that you can point us towards in terms of training these extrasensory abilities? Yes, the first and obligatory training, that's a training in, in meditation, deep meditation. Because uh, you can do something of this kind only if you transform in meditative state. If you stop all the jumping of your thoughts in your head, all this everyday activity. If you concentrate on only one idea, on only one principle, then uh, it's possible to make something of this kind. And then concentration. So first of all, meditation, and of course, relaxation together with meditation, it's obligatory. And second, concentration on some particular topic. So you need to be relaxed and concentrated. It's same as uh, in French uh, 
uh, sports detail you if you want to make a good um, player you need to train yourself to keep something in your hand as if you keep little bird if you keep it too tough it will die if you keep it too loose it will fly away so same here you should be relaxed <laughs> but concentrated that's really beautiful and that sort of alludes alludes to what i was one of my questions was today was because i think intention could potentially mean different things to different people um but i think in the example you've given is like the focus to one particular concentrating on a particular idea or thought is that what you would describe or define intention as being or am i putting words in your mouth no you're absolutely right Aggie. so intention it is concentration on some particular idea some particular thought and it's not only telepathic communication if you want to do something in your life you need to have intention to change it to make it and it related to any part of our activity as scientists i always concentrate i always have intention to solve some problem and I, it may take me several days just to think about this to process sometimes weeks you know i have uh, 17 books but every book i am preparing maybe two three years it's just thinking about this changing something doing something new then finally slowly i come to idea what should be in this book and then still i have to change it sometimes uh, so i need to make a second uh, third edition same here only with very precise concentration on some idea without some separate thoughts and separate um, movement of your uh, mind you can do something that is why it's very good to do on nature when you go to nature, you can walk in the forest, nearby the lake, river, the sea, and then you need to be concentrated on something. You need to think about this and then process this idea again, again, and again. Then finally, it may happen something. That brings me to one of the places I wanted to go with you today because you've discussed. Um... Obviously, last time we we caught up, we had a conversation. We had more of a conversation around Karelian photography and GDV. Um, And, yeah, your ability to pick up intention in senses, which is profound as the fundamental sort of starting blocks of your work, I guess. Um, Today, I sort of wanted to veer off a little bit because you've also done a lot of work with water um, and structuring water. Now... There's been some research, most notably out of Japan, I guess, um, where people's intentions have influenced like plant growth based on the type of water that they feed particular plants. Um, I guess I wanted to open up the conversation today to sort of see, yeah, just invite you to share how you think water responds to intention um, and the importance of, yeah, just, I guess it, it opens up this whole really interesting human experience when something that we after following your work it's hard to see water as an innate object but nonetheless I think something that most people consider to be innate which is water just is water Um, but then you start to see how it responds to intention Um, it seems to be a whole there's a massive implication that it is very alive um, and responding and talking in dialogue with human being then there's almost a conversation about all intention. I'm conscious now I'm preloading the answer for you, but how do you, yeah, your your awareness of intention and the relationship between water and what that implies for us? Okay, so we discussed with you that water, it's not just animated uh, system. It is water, it's a life. Water, it is life. What is the basis of everything? And what its origin of life without water on the earth life is impossible water is amazing substance uh, we have more water on the earth on our earth than all our land we have water all over the universe and water is the main origin in bible 
it's the main origin in biology and now it's more important to understand that water is the main origin of conquering different planets planets like mars in the moon and so on so water uh, it is very responsive and now we have uh, concepts on quantum uh, electrodynamics <clears throat> how we can explain this from scientific point of view but in simple words water reorganize itself there are chaotic water there are of course bad water dead water but there are alive water water can easily respond by reorganizing to everything that is going to around and of course to human intentions i can give a very simple example we have red wine and we have wonderful red wine of very high status and we have simple red wine table red wine even worse what's the difference the difference is human intention because for top level wines there are highly professional people who put all their intention in preparing this wine and they put all their life to this and this wine is not only a product product of soil sun and water it is product of human intention without this it would have been impossible and this is a big difference you take one bottle it is fantastic wine you take another bottle it's, it's so it's not bad but still so uh, and same related to everything so in our everyday life we always change water around ourselves if we want if we prepare our food with positive intention we have very nice food and in some uh, places in some houses some ladies some men now <laughs> because i like to cook as well <laughs> if we do it with good positive attitude good intention then we have wonderful food if people do it with neglectance then it's very low quality so that is why we need to understand that if we want to have our life active then we need to have to apply intention to every moment of our life and of course uh, when we make experiments we have special sensors that allow us to see and to check the energy of water and we had many many experiments with influencing water because if i meet some psyche people who claim that they can influence people okay i ask them okay please influence water because if you can influence water you can influence people because we are water inside 70 percent hey guys quick question for you to comment below so the fact that we are 70 percent water and that actually our intentions are reprogramming water have you considered what your intentions are doing in and around your body and your structure and your system? Is this stuff that you've thought about before? Or is this something new for you? I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about this because I found this really intriguing. Come on, leave a comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. That'll be me writing back to you. That's the, um, that's the bit that really, I guess, hooked me um, was the fact that intention influences water. And just the awareness that we are also 70% water. The sort of connecting those two facts together and then thinking about just if we can influence ourselves with our intentions and, yeah, just the importance of the awareness around what you're sharing and discussing with us today when it comes to, yeah, just, well, everything when it comes to health and wellness um, because if you're not carrying a solid intention or a positive intention, you are actually 70% water and your the rest of your system is actually responding to potentially said negative intention, correct? Yes, it's correct, absolutely. So if we want to be healthy, if you want to, um, to make our life uh, even not healthy, healthy is only a little part of life. Uh, the wellness we understand your health 
your social status and your attitude to life is all violence altogether. So, and it's all interrelated. You, we create our life, our own, with our own intention and our own thoughts. So people who created their life on a big scale, they did it first of all by their intention and by a lot of their own efforts. Then it became very successful. If we don't want to apply our efforts, our intention, it will be nothing in our life. And that's why many people, they claim, oh, I'm so poor, I'm so bad, I'm blah, blah, blah. But, okay, guys, you should do it yourself. Why are you waiting for someone? People, government, uh, organizations do something for you. No, do it yourself. When I see some young beggars sitting on the streets, I want to tell them, okay, guys, why don't you go and walk? If take a, take a broom and clean the street instead of sitting there. So that's why uh, all comes from intention, and then it can come to our life and it, to our, and it project in our future. Do you often reflect back at potentially what your intentions were at the origins of I don't want to say stumbling upon this work. But uh, coming to this work, feeling into that, yeah, it takes so much belief and intention to activate um, the depths of this work, really, and just where you were at in your own life in order to, yeah, what were your intentions at that time? Yes, absolutely. That's, I do it in all my life, and I know how, how results coming. So that's absolutely clear <laughs> for me, no doubt. And uh, I was raised up in the Soviet Union. It was a very tough country. It was very tough conditions. Now again, we live in very tough conditions. But still, with your attitude, with your intention, you can create your life in the most unpleasant and difficult conditions. It was really interesting to hear you uh, describe the three variabilities of health being obviously your physical health and wellness but then also your social status and then also your attitude to life um is that something that you were like is that so, like somewhere that you picked that up from or is that something that you developed as an awareness over time through your body of work you see this what i told it's not mine in invention it was always in all ancient beliefs in all ancient philosophers, starting from ancient uh, Ayurvedic understanding, from Chinese understanding of life, not only traditional Chinese medicine, but Chinese philosophy. Then, of course, uh, Buddhism, it's uh, comprehension of everything. And uh, later on, it was in Shumer civilization. From there, it was accepted by uh, uh, Jews and from Jewish civilization it came to Christianity so it's all same idea that was transformed from one civilization to another civilization from one nation to another nation it may be different uh, cover different uh, religious uh, books but in principle it's the same core and this core was always created by top-level people, top-level thinkers who had the direct contact with higher spirits. And this higher spirits transformed them, this knowledge and this wisdom. And now we need just to accept it, to accept it as it is, that it's not our in invention in 20th, 21st century. No, it was here on the earth for millenniums. And that's why we need to accept it and just follow. Dr. Constantine, were you aware of the spiritual teachings prior to studying this work? Or did you study this work and then it was cutting edge science and then all of a sudden it was like, but it's also the same as what they've been saying from ancient times, but now we've just got science and the ability to measure it. Can you explain the chicken and the egg? What came first? <laughs> you see just uh, my latest book, the name of my latest book is 
um, the magicians of the quantum era. And in this book, I'm uh, describing my meeting with different psyche people, top level psyche people in different countries. <clears throat> and I describe some philosophical ideas, both from ancient philosophy and from modern times, from the time of uh, quantum physics, quantum reality. So that is why, <clears throat> to my mind, now we have good, very good time. Now we can really combine together science and spirituality. And we understand that we need to be based on the background of ancient wisdom. At the same time, we have now a new understanding of what it is consciousness, what it is life, and we need to implement this and develop this. Only in 21st century, we really have accepted science of consciousness. Before, it didn't exist. Now we have a lot of new concepts, theories, and quantum theories, um, integration information theory, that try to describe consciousness. And not only uh, just like a theory, but as a very practical topic to help people to make their life more strong, more healthy, and more happy. And to help people to get rid of many serious problems. And now we have no doubts that, for example, reincarnation, that, yes, it, is, it exists. Our previous lives, yes, they do exist. Afterlife, uh, yes, this exists. And it's not just ideas, spiritual ideas, but it's experiments, real experiment. I, I can give you a lot of examples. I can lecture on this topic <laughs> for hours. <laughs> so that is why we live in very interesting time when we have clear evidences of all these situations and it's published it's in many papers books but of course there are some people who accept it some people who don't accept it and it depends on your own attitude to everything so if you can accept it if you can understand this i don't tell believe no you need to believe in your family and in your religious confession but if you want to understand if you want to study if you want to read papers books of course it takes time but it's possible then you understand yes it is real we still need to develop this we need still to study but it is part of our reality You've opened up a very cu big curiosity point there around some of these experiments <laughs> um, in the afterlife and reincarnation and rebirth. Um, we don't have hours, for you, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah. for you to lecture, which I, I, I um, am very dismayed at that, to be honest. I would love to listen to you share about it for hours, but maybe you could um, just give us an insight into some of the research that went into that space, please. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't understand your question. Oh, uh, maybe you can afford us some insights into, um, yeah, just some of the research that you've done into, yeah, some of these more afterlife, life after death, reincarnation type of topics and how, yeah, they're starting to slowly be proven because that is, whoa. Of course, uh, I did many research in different fields, uh, but now, for example, now uh, we are um, developing a very interesting line together with my colleagues uh, from Concordia University in Canada, Raul Verde, uh, Svensson, uh, then uh, we have very um, wonderful lady, Jennifer, who work with us. And we are developing a line. We study uh, transformation of people in death. So you know that I had some uh, research line. It was in the 90s where I've been studying people after death. It was very interesting uh, research. It was published in books and papers. Now we decided to study the process of transformation to death. How people transform from life state to death. And um, our model, our project, we do it in hospices where Jennifer She's a medical assistant. She works in uh, hospices and she can supervise people who are 
are supposed to die. We understand that people with some terminal illnesses or elderly people, then if they are totally conscious, they understand, of course, they, they are dying, but uh, they accepted this. And then uh, they we make an agreement with them, with their families, uh, that uh, they would participate in this experiment. We put our sensor on them and we take measurement of their energy day by day. And every day it's possible to have the level of energy, variation of energy, and to see uh, their conditions. So psychological, physiological, so we have all the data. And then we can follow up them, for example, one week, 10 days before death and after death. And this is really very interesting effect process because it is very well known for all professionals who work in hospices in, uh, with terminal ill people that some time before death, they have much stronger energy. They feel much better. Very often they tell, oh, now I'm okay. Now I feel very good. Uh, I'm sure that after some time, I will be okay, totally. And they are very active, very energetic, but then they die. But it's just, um, I would say, anecdotic. So nobody ever was able to measure this. Because if you measure normal parameters, like temperature, blood pressure, uh, heart rate, you practically see no real effect. But with energy we see really strong effect. We see transformation of the energy in time, like this coming up, down, depending on the uh, physiological condition. Then at some moment, energy is coming down, people become weaker and weaker. And again, it's understandable process because our um, energy limits, uh, they are limited and then people are dying, then of course energy is coming down. But then maybe about one, two days before this, energy is coming down tremendously like this. And at the moment when people feel much better. And then at some moment of this high energy, they die. So life stops. But still we see very high energy after this. So it means that for me, I have no doubts that death, it's not just the end of physiological process, the end of brain activity. It is transformation. Transformation from one universe, our universe, to other universe, to other reality. And we have the notion in physics of multiple universes, multiple realities, and this is totally applied to this process. So we have no, a lot of evidences now that after death, people, people's spirit transform to another reality, transform to another dimension. Because we have concept uh, developed by a very famous physicist Everett, uh, concept of multiple universes. And this is a concept that's quite accepted in physics. So, and then of course we can somehow communicate with other universes. We can, can communicate with other of those people. And again, we have experiments of this topic. In Arizona University, we have a wonderful scientist, Professor Gary Schwartz. And uh, for many, many years, he is doing experiments on communicating with spirits, with spirits of possessed people. And he's using uh, physical instruments to record this. And he has papers published, books published. He's a brilliant scientist. Um, every meeting with him is amazing. He has good, he's a wonderful person with good sense of humor as well. And uh, so that's, uh, to meet him, it's, uh, it's really amazing every time. And in his experiment, he proved one experiment, another experiment, that it's possible to communicate with 
spirits of past possessed people. And in our experiments, we demonstrate that yes, after death, energy is kept for some time. Of course, we can't take measurements for long, very long time. We are still, we have physical body and physical body decay, no doubt, after death. But we have our informational side. We have our spirit. And spirit, we uh, accept it from the point of view of information from the point of view of integrative informational theory. That spirit, it is our way, how we convey information to each other, to environment, and how we accept information. That's the goal of our consciousness, of our spirit, of our uh, mind. And is that spiritual energy that's when you're saying you're measuring energy towards the end of someone's life and there's initially, as they start to come towards an end, you see a dip in the energy readings, but then all of a sudden a couple of days before it just starts to peak. Um, obviously, the, well, not obviously, I should qualify that to some degree, but um, it seems like it's the physical energy that's coming down and all of a sudden a particular type of energy kicks in. Is that what you refer to or identify as the spiritual energy or yeah no you see uh, when we talk about spirit uh, about soul even then we need to understand it's not simple it's not just one simple topic it's not just possible to take measurement of one simple instrument no it is very complicated topic and we still don't know, know what it is we still don't understand it we know only little glimpses of this re reality, of this process. That is why with our instruments, we are measuring something. And we can make interpretation. In reality, it's impossible to measure spirit. Because I always ask my students, is it possible to measure magnetic field? Is it possible? No, it's impossible. It's possible only to measure effect of magnetic field on some sensors, like a needle, like a current, like movement of some subjects. Then we can calculate, of course, if we have this change of current, then it means we have this power of magnetic field. Same with spirit. It's impossible to measure spirit. It is possible only to measure effect of our spiritual activity on some sensors, on some instrument. Our Bible instruments is one of instrument, but one of, and I'm sure that uh, we have other instruments, we have other methods, and uh, now we have interesting moment in science that finally scientists can do some this type of study. We have some means how to publish it. And uh, for example, now, we are coming with our colleagues to uh, conference uh, to uh, in April. It will be a big conference on consciousness in the United States. And we are coming with this presentation. And I'm sure it will be presented. It will be some interest to this. We have some paper published on this topic later. So that's a very exciting moment in our life, in our science, that we can do this type of study, we can have it published and we can present this uh, for interested people and uh, we have very good acceptance for this. So that's really, for me, I'm really happy that I live in these exciting times. They really are very exciting times. Hey, you're Inspired Tribe. I want to take a quick sec. I wanted to share something today with you that is really dear to my heart. And it's actually what keeps the entire ecosystem around the Inspired Evolution thriving, my one-on-one -on -one coaching. So it's basically coaching that helps you live a spiritually aligned life. I coach people from all different types of walks of life that these people are leaders and they're looking to have an incredible spiritual impact in the lives that they're leading for themselves and then also lead in alignment to their values. Now you don't have to take my word for it. Here's a few people that have also transformed through my coaching and here's what they have to say. 
Amrit is a fantastic coach. In a few sessions, he got to a depth that I'd only experienced before working with certain medicines. And He's gone through a lot of the struggles that you're probably facing. Then my corporate banking job wasn't really doing it. You feel like you're not making progress towards your goals. And Amrit's been a really strong, supportive figure in my journey. I'm more in control of myself. I'm kinder to myself. I actually have that vision and a purpose. I do feel like I'm a better version of myself already. Amazing energy. He was easy to talk to, which made me easy to trust him. Working with Emmerich at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and really I was bouncing out of bed. Whenever I get off the calls with Emmerich, best money we've ever spent. <laughs> I would not recommend him because I don't want everyone to know about him and then I won't be able to book him. If he gets too busy, I won't get my turn. I would say absolutely. There's no way you can work with Amrit for a period of time without being transformed. So if you're considering him as a coach, do not hesitate because you won't be disappointed. As you guys can see, there's a lot of people all over the world from all these different corners experiencing incredible transformations. I don't think, if I can say humbly myself, that there is anything quite like this somewhere else online. Most people that you know have channels that you know grow and grow and grow don't really focus on one-to-one -one offerings. I have just found that it is the most profound space where you can bring yourself in a private container and really just share what's going on for yourself. And if you want to book in for that call with me, touch base, it's www amrit.coach forward slash life that's www.amrit.coach forward slash l-i-f-e there is a link in the show notes below to book in that call and yeah if you want to take your journey further if you want to dive in deeper and you really want to live a spiritually aligned life if it's for you please do check it out and without too much further ado once again for your spirit for yourself today's podcast i want to ask you about Without feeling, yeah, I don't want to make this to be too doom and gloom, but to some degree the world is under a very shifting state, let's call it that. Um, research and um, insights such as yours coming to the fore, but then also you take a look at some of the, um, yeah, just some of the the state of, you know, just socio-geopolitical situations that are going around the world, even also just the way, you know, potentially... Um, species are now leaving the planet um it's been a very it's been a very interesting time to be alive we can talk probably a lot about that and that's probably its own podcast unto itself but one of the sort of low-hanging fruits just to sort of tie into this conversation that we've been having today your thoughts on i guess the advent of technology and also where we are now with all these signals kind of floating around in the ether and the environment around us um, but then also what we were discussing earlier on in the podcast around water being influenced by intention. Is there a difference between bits of information flying around in the ether and intention and how that's transferred? And should we be somewhat concerned or should is it okay with all the, you know, even right now there's bits of information, people's Wi-Fi signal floating through the environment around us. Um, is that impacting our water structured systems or is that not happening <laughs> you try to mix everything together yeah, more than right. <laughs> influences fields okay okay <laughs> it's very funny for me okay yes of course we have a lot of i would say energies around ourselves we w live in the world of cosmic energy of our artificial technological energies of our thirds of billions of people. And it's all around ourselves and it all influences our life. And it all influences environment. Plus, we live in a very interesting time of cosmic transformation. All this uh, global warming that we have now, it's not just <clears throat> a result of our human activity. No, of course not. It is cosmic process cycle, cosmic cycle. In 20th century, we was in a cycle of cold temperature. And you know, it was really very cold in mid uh, 20th century, then in the up to 70s, then it became warmer and warmer. Now we come to the moment of the cycle of global warming. So it's absolutely normal. It will be maybe 50 years more, maybe 100 years more. Of course, it will have some effect on our civilization, of course, but still uh, that's natural process. Same, we have a lot of natural effects 
that affect our life. We have now technological effects, but now we have new uh, topics like artificial intelligence that again influence our life. So you see, it's not just we live in a vacuum. No, we live in a very complicated environment. It's maybe a very hostile environment. It's not kind to us all the time. That is why some people can survive, some people they suffer and die. It's, it's normal because this is a way of development of humankind as a whole. Because we are as human species. We are not individual beings, but we are reality. We are common. We are unity. We are all together. We are all bound together. And that's why then, of course, it depends, a lot of it depends on yourself, but a lot depends on uh, situation. I can tell, uh, like an example, if you have a little boat and you are in strong river, of course, with your boat, you can do something. You can float one side to another side, but still you have a current. You can fight against the current for some time, but maybe you will lose, maybe you win, it depends. Then on this river, you may have waterfalls, you may have some stones, you may have some dangers. And again, it depends. You may survive or you may die. You may go to some beautiful land or you may pass by even without understanding that you lost it. So that is why. Uh, life depends on ourselves, no doubts. But at the same time, we live in very complicated world, world full of dangers, of ugly situations. Now we have war in Ukraine, in Israel, in Africa. We have uh, epidemics, we have bad flu, uh, we have hurricanes. Uh, we have uh, people dying every day in different stations, even car crashes. So that means we live in very complex world and it's our goal to make this world better, step by step. But it would not come in one year, in five years. It takes millenniums to transform this world, but I have no doubt that we are coming to this development into this transformation and what we are doing in our activity, in our technology, in everything that we have, that we create, starting from our tele mobile phones, computers, up to our cosmic exploration that is fantastic now, really fantastic, that uh, really shows that it's possible for human beings to develop. It's possible. It's possible to destroy everything to make war, to destroy lives and civilizations, but it's possible to create. And then we need to choose on which side we are. Your research is continuously growing and uncovering new ground. Um, what are you most excited about that's coming up in your awareness at the moment? I'm uh, mostly excited with the development of new science and new technologies. It's amazing moment now what we have. And uh, for me, artificial intelligence is a huge step in the development of humankind. And we see how it is developing, growing slowly, slowly, but it's growing and we use it in everyday reality now. I see with uh, amazing development in cosmic exploration. And for me, it's fantastic really fantastic because now cosmic exploration became a part of uh, everyday reality. The first cosmonauts was the heroes. They were all like Yuri Gagarin. Now it's just a job, <clears throat> very interesting job, not easy job, complicated, but it's a job. If you want to be a driver, you can be a driver. You can drive car or tra train or a plane. But if you want to be, be cosmonaut, okay, you can, young people can do it. But of course, it's a very complicated profession, but it's in principle possible. Now we have cosmic tourism, 
and again in principle it's possible so for me what we have in our everyday reality what we have in our science every day i receive some papers on uh, new scientific uh, achievements it's amazing what's going on in science in neuroscience in science of consciousness in environmental sciences so that is why for me it's so exciting and it gives my life very very interesting so for me i have no time to lose my time my life I have no time i'm busy all the time because it's interesting it's amazing it allows you to develop and it allows to develop humankind i love that and lastly dr constantine all this work around helping people expand their consciousness understand their consciousness and with the science and the innovation technologies that are coming up you have still maintained this current around the importance of intention through your work so can you just yeah we'll close today by getting your thoughts on why intention is so important and just what your hopes are for people from yeah what they could potentially take away from this podcast with yeah what you're hoping to share about the power of intention okay so uh maybe the last but not the least <laughs> Uh, we need to understand our life depends on ourselves first of all it depends how we organize our life but the most important how we think about ourselves and how we think about our life most of people they lose belief in themselves they don't believe in themselves they don't believe they can do anything so first of all you need to love yourself and you need to believe in yourself and then you need to understand if you want to do something with your life not to just to waste it you need to apply your intention you need to think what you want to do you need to put some goals in your life but it should be high goals not just to earn one million dollars it's not a goal it's just a process if you put high goals in your life mostly for young people it's important then of course you can slowly step by step achieve it and it's done only by our self so with our intention with our mind we create reality and we transform reality and reality of our life and reality of our life as a people around ourselves so let's do it together and then we make our life much better <laughs> dr constantine thank you so much your blessings as always being here with you just the potential for human spirit and what is available to us as a species is just always blown completely out of the water pardon the pun and it just yeah i leave these conversations enriched and so much food for thought and just this is a real invitation to really just anchor back into my being, the power of, yeah, our thoughts, our being, and, yeah, just this real sense of wellness that comes from the curious exploration of the human spirit and the consciousness that we possess. Thank you for today's conversation, but honestly, it's, you know, this conversation stands on the shoulders of our last conversation and also, like you said, 17 books, 30 years of research, Everything that we get to explore today, just we're reveling in all your insights and your curiosities and all your explorations over the last so long. So thank you so much for who you are and being here with us today and sharing yourself so abundantly. Thank you so much, Dr. Gosling. Thank you, Amit. Thank you, everybody. Hey there, Inspired Spirit. If you love this episode, please remember to like, comment, and hit subscribe. It helps more than I can say. And if you want to check out another episode that we did with Dr. Constantine, we went super deep on intention and telepathic communication. This was an incredible conversation. You can check it out here. And if you want to continue your viewing experience here at the Inspired Evolution, check out one of these episodes and continue your journey. See you in the next episode.